This one is an example of a great idea that got murdered by behind the scenes shenanigans. Sahara, based off a novel by Clive Cussler, released in April of 2005. Really? Hmm. All right. Released in April of 2005, directed by Brett Eisner, with a runtime of two hours and five minutes, starring Matthew McConaughey, Steve Zahn, and Penelope Cruz. Also starring William H. Macy, Lenny James, Rain Wilson, and Lambert Wilson, with a budget of 130 million, a domestic take of 68 million, the foreign take of 50 million for a worldwide of 119, almost 120 million, giving us a loss of just over $10 million. Yeah, this one gets real untidy apparently behind the scenes at the producer and above level. You've got the studio not picking up on the promised sequel, Clive Cussler demanding to execute his right over decisions as cast, crew, and script type of stuff, the studio claiming he's obstructive, disruptive, uh, a problem on the set, causing nothing but delays and excessive costs. Him counterclaiming that, no, 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 they've ignored me at every step, I've had every right, and they've never come, held up on their end of the bargain. And then the studio coming back and saying that Mr. Kussler came out and uh, sabotaged the movie as often as he could with negative press releases, negative comments, really did whatever he could to wreck it. It gets super untidy. And I think the last thing was both sides are in court trying to figure out who owes who or who's going to pay for the 20 million plus in legal fees and cult room costs. And it's just a mess. It's just bleh. The loss of 10 million and all the other dramas and hassle and legal shenanigans in the background. The planned trilogy or the planned franchise around Dirk Pitt, the main character, never got off the ground. This was meant to be movie one in the James Bond sort of Indiana Jones genre. And it's a shame it never launched because this was a bit of fun. So the characters in this adventure, you've got Derek Pitt, the extra, extra manly all-American man. He's kind of cool, actually. He's a lot of fun. He's a little zany. He's tough. He's macho. He's always got a plan. He's very, very confident. But at the same time, he's got self-depreciating humor. He takes on board criticism. He'll say sorry when he's got it wrong. Uh, he's a fun guy. It's a fun character to follow along on this adventure. Then you've got Al Giordino, or Giordino, or Giordani. Al Giordino. There we go. Al. We're going to call him Al. And Al is awesome. He's like my favorite character in this movie. He's fun. He's your plucky comedy relief sidekick, who's also tough, a good shot, a bit of a mean fighter, and always in on the plan. He's the guy you want on your zany adventures. Because he's going to complain, he's going to call you out, but he's going to back you up 100%. He's very, very well portrayed by Mr. Zahn. This is a fun character. Then you've got Dr. Roaz. She's a doctor with the World Health Organization, and she's out to save the day. She's found a disease or a plague or symptoms of a thing, and now she's off to track it down through all manner of danger and disaster. She's unrelenting, and she's going to do the right thing for the best amount of people, to the best of her ability. Fortunate that it gets a whole bunch of people killed doing it, but her heart was in the right place, right? That's what matters. No situational awareness matters, and not getting all your teammates dead. Much more important. Anyway, that little detail aside, good fun character. She's in for the ride, she's quite reliable, and she gets in on the banter. In on the panic and the chaos and the confusion. She ain't no wilting flower third wheel. She is part of this team. Also making the fact that the planned series or franchise never launched even sadder. Because these three... Oh, I'd like to see more of these three in action. And they are complemented extremely well by Rudy Gunn, their science tech analyst buddy sidekick who goes along on their adventure to begin with. And look, hey, for the techie sidekick, he's great. He's good fun and he's screaming and yelling and running around with everybody else. Freaking out right alongside Al. Good fun. Good character. Behind it all, Admiral Sandecker. He bankrolls it, he authorizes it, he reluctantly goes along with it. And Mr. William H. Macy does such a good job in these roles. I just love seeing him on screen. He's got to be one of my favorite actors. And at first you think, oh, oh, oh he's just background. He's just going to be there in a couple of scenes. Nah, he keeps popping up doing his thing in support of his boys. And he's good. Another one. Him and Rudy. 
I'm gonna miss them. I really wanted to see more of them. No franchise. Sorry, guys. Oh, yeah, and the bad guys. Kazim and Mossad. They're your bad guys. One's a warlord dictator of some made-up country in Africa, and the other one is the, what, European businessman heavily invested with him. Look, they're Bond villains, and they do their job very well as Bond villains. So it turns out that Mali is not made up. It is, in fact, real. It is also the eighth largest country in Africa. So there you go. Hmm. Not really believable, not terribly relatable, but that's not what they're there for. They're there to help launch a franchise that never happened. Yeah, I've mentioned the franchise several times. I'm just kind of bitter. So characters, look, overall, I'm going to be giving the characters a 3.5. These characters really stood out. They were good value. They were varied and strange enough that they all felt different, but they all felt kind of engaging. And even the support characters like Rudy and Sandecker, they had a lot to do. I really enjoyed all the actors' performances. I was in on this. Yeah, this is good. Characters, 3.5. Story. It's your James Bond, Indiana Jones knockoff adventure around the world. Well, mainly Africa. Actually, entirely Africa. Let's just calm down. No around the world, just Africa. Be calm, Murray. Just, just chill, son. Straight up, the concept is silly. And the only character who doesn't think it's silly is the main character, and all the other characters think that his idea or his concept for the story is, in fact, silly. And that's what makes it believable. You take a dumb idea, and then you have everyone else in the movie going, this is a dumb idea. You go on, yeah, that's right, but it's fun. And so you're in. So, brief overview, an ironclad, looks like a steamboat, from the Civil War period, nicks off with a whole bunch of gold at the end of the Civil War, ends up in Africa. Yeah, it's an insane concept, as everyone in the movie keeps pointing out. It's full of gold and cultural significance, so Dirk Pitt wants it, it's like a pipe dream, it's like his Moby Dick, it's his little obsession. Meanwhile, there appears to be a plague that's breaking out in one little place in Africa called Mali, no idea if Mali's a real place. If it is a real place, I'm sorry for calling your country fictional. Anyway, in the possibly real country of Mali, there's some plague that's broken out. The doctor's off to try and find the source and try to correct or, you know, find out a way to stop the plague from spreading, stop endangering all of Africa. A warlord is trying to maintain a total lockdown on the country that he's just stolen, from what I understand of the uh, exposition and setup. Our heroes, chasing the legend of the ship, get attacked because they're connected with the doctor. They figure out the need to go and save the doctor. And so those two paths connect. They discover the source of the plague isn't really a plague. It's a major underwater poisoning. Uh, nasty, nasty toxins in the underground riverbeds. They also discover it's leaked into the river, causing red algae, which will spread in the ocean and be basically the oceanic apocalypse. In an effort to stop this from happening, the Admiral, at first reluctantly and then wholeheartedly, supports and endorses their efforts to go and find the source. Meanwhile, he runs around trying to get the CIA involved and bug the American Embassy to actually try and do something. Their response feels like it's a little too politically real-world accurate, which was incompetent indifference. Anyway, back to the possibly real, but I'm not entirely sure, country of Mali. They run around, they find the poison source, which is in fact a massive stockpile of toxins that are scheduled for incineration in this lovely green ecosystem uh, solar-powered incinerator, which is great, except there's delays and constructions and costs, which means they're stockpiling instead of getting instead of getting rid of it. The businessman figures out that this is a big, 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 big problem. And so he's going to do a run up, blow the place up, blame someone else and run away. Now, because the three heroes got involved and figured all this out, the doctor's kidnapped. The other two are sent for execution. They escape. They come back to really cool little sequence of the desert, sneak back in, rescue the girl. Don't blow up the solar factory. Plant, solar plant, solar factory. Giant sunshine generator. Save the girl, stop the toxins, save the day. There we go. Oh, get into a very contrived, very silly, but highly entertaining fight with the general whilst they're hiding out in the ship that they found with one working cannon. Yeah, okay, it's dumb. It's really dumb. But the way that everyone in the situation is screaming about how dumb this is, and the fact that none of them believe that it works, and when it does work, they're all going, that shouldn't have worked, made it just good value. <laughs> there are so many moving parts in this one you think you get lost or a lot of details that just get skipped over but it seems to be done pretty much exactly it's the right amount of info at the right time with the correct amount of exposition and the correct amount of visuals to back it all up look 
this is one of the more creative and exciting and occasionally very silly stories and you're willingly there because they explain that yes this is as silly as you think it is isn't it fun and you're kind of like yeah yeah this is fun for an adventure movie with this level of complexity and winding plot all connecting together and all the other support elements of the movie coming together at once and then coming together again and then coming together again look i had a really good time with this i'm going to go ahead and give this story uh, 3.5 that's a little higher than I was initially gonna go but just retelling this has made me excited it makes me want to go watch the movie again so you know the story's done its job look and feel hey it's good the music is great and they do that cool little trick where you hear the music playing at full volume then it'll cut to a shot of a car or a boat or a gas station and you hear the same music playing on the radio just tie it all together then they'll go on their way and the music's on full blast again good fun it's also a very, very well shot movie. Great sweeping views, great action cam, great chase cam, overheads, the whole thing just felt right. Where in the boat sequences, the camera sweeps around. It moves very fluidly. When it's a helicopter chase, the, the camera is much more dramatic and sharper angles and big diving shots. If it's a car chase, the camera's a little bit more bumpy, a little bit more straight lines, a lot of, lots of close scenery moving quickly. And they framed the fighting and the punch-ups quite well. Gave you the sense of urgency of a fist fight, but still took the time to frame each shot so you could actually see what's going on. Audio effects and foley work were really good. Very nice use of sets, very nice use of actual locations. Took a lot of advantage of the vistas and the, and the environments that they were in as well. Anytime they could get a good shot of the background or a nice shot of the river or a sweeping shot of the coastline, they take that. Same with packed streets or nice buildings or general urban environments. Anytime they can incorporate a close-up clutter of people and buildings with backgrounds, they take it. Okay, the traumatized, diseased, poisoned eyeball effects. Yeah, freak me out. Hate that. Hate any sort of eye trauma. Just, just don't like it. So it did a good job, but I didn't like it. <laughs> and as you may have figured out by now, if you watch most of my videos, I really like a good credits intro sequence. And this has got to be one of my favorites. As the music's playing, which I really like, and they have the camera just going around the cabin, showing you the, all the main characters and their history and what they're up to and what they have done and what they're doing now and their interests. They show it to you in photos and postcards and models and images and news articles as you just wander around this cabin. And it really did feel like a workspace. It felt like a very lived in office. Look and feel, yeah. It gets a 3.25. It's a good movie, then just that step above good. It's good plus. Script and dialogue. Look, this was clever, fast, and natural. It was witty. It was succinct. It didn't waste its time telling you stuff you didn't need to know, and then really lent into the important bits of exposition, but wrapped it up in such a way you didn't mind. This was very Mission Impossible in the way they did that. They delivered the information and you enjoyed it. Kirk and Al, they really did feel like a pair of best buddies that known each other so long. They bicker and they banter and they have a go at each other, but they've always got each other's backs. And what was most fun is every now and then they're blah, 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 blah. And then they'll shift conversation to something very serious. And neither of them need are standing around going, what are you talking about? What did you change topic for? No, they're both so in tune and so on the same level. That one changes topic, the other one follows it. Perfect example. They're on a boat. It's under fire. It's also on fire. And they are screaming and yelling instructions at each other. And although the instructions aren't always clear, they're just doing it. And it was solid value. Okay, the best part of that whole boat chase is where you've got the Admiral on the line. He's on the satellite phone listening to all this happen. And it's his personal yacht, his favorite boat that's getting shredded. And he's yelling and carrying on and they're giving little bits of tidbits of information and keeps cutting back to him reacting to what they're saying as if he was on the ship with them. And it was just well done. Sandaker and Rudy, their dialogue, everything they said, everything they did, part of parcel of the main story there was no stuck on the outside weird dialogue from any of the crew and even the doctor who is a late coming to this group fits in very quickly and it feels very very natural like i also already mentioned we get the travel montage and we get the unveiling mystery both of the very cool 
there's a couple other little very nice uh, sight gags in here. One of which is as they're surrendering to some of the local raiders, uh, they drop, they dump in their guns and Al's walking along, drops his rifle, drops a pistol, drops a pistol, drops another pistol, drops a pair of knives, just keeps unloading weaponry. And Dirk turns around and just starts laughing. Uh, it's just, it was quite a clever thing. And as I said before in the story category, they frequently acknowledge the insanity of their situation. And that just draws you in even further. On the whole, look, this was a good old time. I really enjoyed myself with the dialogue here. The dialogue is an easy, easy 3.25. Fun factor, nice and simple, 3.5. Had a ball. It's fast, it's funny, and it's very well done. Good writing, great cinematography, nice sequences. The story stitches itself together. You get your resolution. Heroes save the day. Bad guy gets taken out, but the ride is fun. And whenever it starts to feel a little unrealistic and silly, they wink at you and say, yeah, we know. Let's keep going. You know, it delivers everything it's meant to deliver. It's an action-adventure movie. And it's got plenty of adventure and plenty of action. It's not hard to watch, and I'm going to go and watch it again. So, final score. Add them all up. 17. Not too bad at all. This has got to be one of my more preferred movies. This is probably one of my favourite movies. I never don't have a good time with this. Never don't have a good time. So do I recommend it? Absolutely. If you're into action adventure with a fair bit of comedy, this is what you want. Anyway, that's my review of Sahara. Hope you had fun, and I'd love to hear what you think about this movie. Did you enjoy it as much as I did? Do you think it should have got a sequel? Would you like to see a reboot? A complete relaunch? Anyway, feel free to comment down below, like and share my review around. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Have yourself a great week, and as always, find some time to watch a movie.